um, Zoom talks, and I'm sorry that there aren't more people here, but that's okay because, oh, there's another person. Abby. Oh, Abby. Very nice. Oh, Abby. This is going to be the first Zoom talks with three Abbeys. <laughs> how, 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 that, that's, that's really interesting. I don't think I've seen three Abbeys at the same time. <laughs> That's great. Um, so if you hear me say Abby, I'm not talking about myself in the third person, I promise. <laughs> Abby, um, seen Abby M. Yes. So uh, the Zoom Talks tonight really, I think, has so much relevance, not just because it's the beginning of the year, which is always a great time to sort of, you know, evaluate where you are in stuff. <laughs> um, meaning where you are financially like even i was thinking earlier this week oh my goodness i need to like redo my budget and stuff like that look like look look at things um <clears throat> but also of course because of covid right and um you know we're all having some something happen to us because of covid for some of us it's, um, you know, we've certainly all known people that have uh, passed because of COVID. Uh, we know people who have had, you know, ongoing illness because of COVID. Uh, some of us have had job changes and or lost job or changed jobs because of COVID. All of that is going to have some financial ramifications and who better to help us to navigate this than especially Veronique, uh, Tom is co-hosting, we're sort of co-hosting, three hosting this uh, Zoom talks because, because it's, well, although Tom is not a financial advisor, he sees people and knows intimately what's going on with people financially <clears throat> um, when they come to him to do their uh, end of life plans, wills, or, um, you, know, uh, you know, planning for their, uh, et cetera. So, um, so with that, really, I don't want to go in too long to this part here, but um, I know everybody on this call, and everybody on this call is about my age, give or take. Um, so we really were trying to tailor this um, Zoom Talks to, and it turns out all, you know, uh, three women have joined us in this <laughs> talk today, um, three women about my age. Um, and hopefully we're going to be able to give you some ideas and thoughts and options of things that maybe you hadn't thought about yet about how to move forward in, in your finances and uh, planning uh, from now until, I don't know, the next quarter. I think, I, I, I don't know how often, Veronique, I know once a year for sure you as a planner send out a yearly check-in for people. But um, I mean, I think quarterly is also appropriate to sort of see if you're on track with your plans and stuff. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get started with Veronique. And uh, she, as she said, she's not, not very comfortable talking to a group of people, <laughs> but I'm like, it's just us. <laughs> so think of talking to me, think of what, you know, if you were going to advise me, like what to do, what are you going to look at? What are the things that you need to look at? What are the options for the next quarter and the next half year and the next year that's going to help me and maybe help me not just through this next period of this pandemic that seems to be endless, but also going further from that. So without further ado, may I invite you to listen to Veronique. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abby. Um, well, uh, first, uh, a couple of words about me because I don't know ABC and ABM, and nice to meet you. Uh, I don't want to scare anyone <laughs> with all of this, but um, I, um, I know a little bit Abby and, and, and Tom and, and Naomi from before. And um, I, um, since everybody is about the same age, I'm, I'm thinking, well, if we, if we will retire and we think of retirement, um, Maybe it's going to be around 15 years, I would assume, maybe 10 to 15 years, or maybe a little bit more. So where, where are you now? Where, where are your plans today? Uh, where do you see yourself in 15 years? 
Uh, do we know what's going to happen in 15 years? We don't know what's happening tomorrow. I mean, something like, like, like this pandemic was very shocking to many, many people. And unfortunately, a lot of people were not prepared for all of this. And now people have time, sit down, they talk to me, um, other people, and just plan and evaluate the, the, their plans. Um, so I'm thinking of something like, uh, did you, would you be interested to know more about um, a way that you get a paycheck for life? Uh, there are places that you can put some of the money and you can accumulate it. And then one day when you retire, you can get the income out of the money. So it's guaranteed and, and, and you're not out with nothing. Um, Tom, do you want to add anything also? I mean, you know, as, 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 as the group isn't that large, I, I must want our participants to feel free to kind of interject with, you know, I'd love to, I'd, I would love to hear what people are thinking of to make time for this. I know everybody's busy, you know, uh, whatever time we choose, you know, uh, Naomi, you have, you have your hand up. I would love, you know, I would love to, we could, we can talk about really, it's really your time. Mm -hmm. We, we love, we love what we do. So it's not that we don't like to talk, you know, share our knowledge, but let's make it relevant to you. So what's on your mind, Naomi? Well, I'd like to share that uh, Veronique has been really wonderful in really keeping me updated with my life insurance and giving me um, options on what she thinks would be best and working with my budget. Uh, we just actually took part of my uh, life insurance and turned it into whole. Uh, so that way, what I'm paying per month at least will be something and not just wasted money so I'm really grateful for her because you know like you said we're all busy and sometimes these things you know you don't really want to think about when you're dying or when you're dead you know it's not exactly oh let's talk about what's going to happen when I'm dead so you know to have someone like Veronique you know kind of send you an email or call me on the phone and say you know this I can offer you this right now let's discuss it and it was easy she explained it to me it was quick um, so I really want to um, say it is something that it's important uh, for you, for us, especially at this age, like we're all about, in, you know, uh, in our 50s and 60s or so. And, and for yourself also, Tom, you know, you're, I'm a client of yours as well. Um, I did my will with you as well. My children freaked out and said, Ma, what's going on? Is there something we should know? <laughs> and I said, no, I'm just preparing because... I don't want to get it to that. I don't want to be 80 and thinking about it because at that time, I, I might, it might be too late. You know, you need to take care of these things when you have a right mind and, and tell, and so your children and your family that, that you have that love, you know, that you're taking care of them too. I'm not going to leave you all the mess. So I'm going to take care of it now that I can do it. So I am super grateful uh, to you, Tom, and to Veronique, and, and obviously Abby is the best. Uh, you know, she, she keeps you healthy, body and mind. <laughs> well, it's all connected, uh, isn't it? It, it? it is. That's why I think it's great that we're all together here. And it just so happens that I work with the three of you. And I love you all because you really not only love what you do, you're great at what you do. Uh, so uh, We'll have to have Naomi on. For on Zoom yeah. talks about, about no. uh, real estate right now in the time of COVID. So we should yeah. talk about that. Yeah, real estate. Because yeah. Without yeah. interrupting, I yeah. just you. want to say that, you know, whether it's life insurance, financial planning, will planning, estate planning, these are not things that are fun to think about. Nobody really wants, like, it's such a drag, right? But the fact of the matter is that it's part of adulting. You know, it's just literally part of adulting. Sure. And, it's, and if and if you don't get it done, and Tom could go on and on and on about <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Factors, but that's not the theme of today. But the fact of the matter is, like, I have most of my stuff in order, pretty much, and I can sleep at night knowing that stuff is in order, knowing that the people that I care about are going to get X, Y, and Z, that my brother is gonna be taken care of, et cetera, et cetera. So in that same vein, you know, taking it back to Veronique and talking about like, 
you say paycheck for life. That sounds like winning the lottery to me. So I would definitely like to know more about what that means. Like, and what is the financial um, expectation that I, how much money would I typically have to put on the side in order to get this paycheck for life situation? Okay, so um, there, there are a few variables into that. So, so let's say, um, first of all, it's guarantee. So you don't have to worry about the market if it goes up and down. Uh, then you, you can decide when you want to have it. So, so what happened is it's based on mortality. What does that mean? So there is a pool of people uh, that put money all together and then based on age and all that, uh, the, the money is divided. So just an uh, easy sample to think about. So let's say, think about um, five, um, five women that each one put $100 in a box. And a year later, one died. Now in the box, there is still $500, but there are four women. So each one of them get $125. So that's, that's kind of mortality. And, 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 and based on this, uh, when a person give a certain amount of, of premium or, or money, um, the company, the insurance company can calculate based on that to make sure that they have money for life. So it doesn't matter if they, they die in five years, in 10 years, or if they die at 110, they will always have the money. That's, that's how it works basically. I mean, well, I can know my grandmother lived to be over a hundred. That sounds like something very interesting to me. Um, uh, Abby Collins just asked if you could speak a little bit about annuities. Yes. Yeah, so, so annuities actually, that's it. That's 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 um, there, there. There there are different annuities. It's 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 a program that is fixed or or variable. It depends on the risk of the person and and the way we do it. Uh, there is a certain uh, questionnaire that, that um, um, I, can, I can share with you and then we, we can discover what the risk tolerance of the person, the person and then uh, based on that to put them in, in, in the market or in, in annuities that are, it, it's just an account or, or in a place that it's safe. And then the money is going to grow there. It's like IRAs, people know, are familiar with Roth IRA, traditional IRA. Um, and then when they are older, they can decide, okay, they want to take some of the money out or they can transfer it to that guaranteed annuity, guaranteed future annuity is that what I said earlier, that it's a lump sum of money that is split to the life of the person. So the same thing that the person get social security every month, they will have this check of the annuity, the income annuity every month. Um, I, I can talk more about details, but... Um, yeah, but just to... to maybe, maybe that, we'll, for we'll, now, it's just, I don't want people well, to... Well, Abby's, <laughs> Abby, you know, Abby Kaufman's point is that, is that her, her, she's coming, she has coming from a gene pool where at least half of her genes, right, are coming <laughs> from a line that where, you know, her grandmother mm -hmm. went to 101 mm -hmm. and her grandfather went to... Almost 102. <laughs> almost 102, about yeah. the same age, okay? So now... In each of those situations, now you know Abby's risk health-wise is that she's likely to live a long time. Yes. But the thing is that the risk there is that if you don't have something set up in advance, you could outlive even if you invest carefully, okay, in the market, and you play the you know the thing is that now we have a lot of volatility. So especially if you look at the last year, there's, it may have gone up overall, but it's a lot like this. So. The issue, the reason you want to consider an annuity, if you're a person of, of somewhat modest means, okay? If you have a great means, you can just have a diversified portfolio and you can bet against the market. You can bet with the market in different baskets, different buckets, right? And that's what some people do, but not, no, what, the only thing that we can a little bit rely on is social security. So for people in our generation, our uh, retirement age, the retirement age is going to be, I think, 72, right? Uh, I was born in 67. So that's, that's I think, my target target age. Um, but right, it's going to just go higher and higher, right? 
So the thing is that the so you might you won't even come into having the the actual flow of money right until later. But the point is is that that amount of money is based on your earnings over you know you have to have your sixty quarters. You have to you know qualify in certain ways, which I think everybody on this call probably will come into right. Um, does anybody on the call is anybody coming into what's called a defined benefit plan? You can like, like a, some or I I um, have one. Okay, so Abby, but, well, but but only part. Sorry, I'm actually napping at the same time, so I'm going to just talk because I'm very very tired. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Um, I have a. It's only going to be like seventeen thousand a year, but it's better than a kick in the butt. No, there you go. But see, so so what Abby Miller has is in fact an annuity paid for by her employer. Okay, it once if she's your vested Abby, you know how much to expect, and it's going to pay every month until your last month in that in that plan, okay? Uh, there, is there a, a little bit of a lump sum at the end or is it basically a single life and then-, and then I work for the federal government. So, so it's, it's a um, pension and I think you just get whatever it is to yeah. die. Right, so if you die, no, my husband died on the 25th. Oy. They gave him of, of November and uh, they, by the December 1st, they already vacuumed the thing back out from they paid on, December, November 30th and on December 1st it was gone yeah uh, that and that was that was the end that's usually mm -hmm. how these defined benefit plans work I think the federal government is somewhat like this in fact uh, TRS I have clients who are teachers in New York City they vacuum out the last six days of November five days actually it's November 30th so five five days left they'll, they'll actually take back the days that the person was not living which they're entitled to that's really how it's supposed to be working and everything is controlled by the rules of that plan. So Abby, that's 17,000. That's meaningful to you, isn't it? Very. It makes me a little bit less stressed in life. Absolutely. So I'm very know, fortunate. Coming in, you so, probably have, you probably know what your social security uh, payment's going to be. You have an idea of that? So, so people probably, yeah. So, then, so that's something. So what, what Veronique was suggesting is that for those of us who don't have that in place, it could be an interesting way to kind of create a private version of what the federal government is doing for Abby. That's right. part of her compensation. I'm sure, Abby, you sacrificed working to get more money in your working life where you could have yeah. worked for, uh, I, at higher I'm, standards, right? I'm actually, yes, I, that is very true in the this beginning. This is a trade-off, right? But, but I actually, am, I'm ahead of the game now because, Fantastic. I mean, whatever, it's I'm part-time employee, so I can do the maximum for a... Uh, okay for putting away catch up and whatever. And then I can do private practice SEP, SEP. So I'm very fortunate, but I don't, I wanted to ask, is it okay, Barani, could you explain a little bit more of how you do this pooled annuity and for whom it really works best? I understand what Tom is saying for people who don't have, um, most of us don't have any more defined benefits, you know, as the rich get richer and the rest of us just That's muddle true. along. Like right now, you're very lucky that you have pension because maybe two or three percent only have pension today. So people, even the 401k now, it used to be matching and all this, and now people don't even match. So the young people, oh. they don't even know about all of these things, right? No matching so anymore? That's done? Many places, they don't match anymore, no. Oh. God. So it's very, very challenging, for, especially for the younger people that they have to rely on their savings, on their you know um so this this annuity is you know like if you have let's say that the seventeen thousand, so you have something you know that you have a paycheck for life you know that you have social security and 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 you're not going to be afraid that you're going to outlive your money you know that's that's for people that they don't have anything you know th there's no guarantee what if if you if you live longer than the money that you have what are you going to do Right. Uh, that's not a good situation. <laughs> exactly. So that's why that's why we can offer pension like we call it pension like and that's the annuity. And, and the pension like can be based on your risk tolerance. So if, if you if you are more risky right now because you're younger, it's fine. We can put it in a risky place. And then when you get older, we can move it to somewhere that is less risky. So you can retire and, and, and have money. 
But how is that different than just investing your money in the stock market or diversified funds or whatever? Uh, how is that different? That's a good question because if you put your money in a diversified fund or you know uh, in, in stocks, how do you know how much to take out? What's going to happen? Let's say if you take out five percent and one year the market goes down, and then you have less money and you take again five percent. This is something a little bit different. This is more like if you want guarantee, if you want something that is going to be there, it doesn't matter if the market is up and down. Got it. So it doesn't fluctuate with the market. That's, yes. I mean, that's, the, that's the promise of doing a fixed annuity where you know, you're, you're taking out some of the guesswork, right? So the, the thing is this, is that your, your monthly needs are pretty much predictable. You're gonna to have to pay maintenance or rent on your apartment. You have food you need to buy. We have medications, we have co-pays on our you know, healthcare. Even if we live frugally, there's still some envelope of what it takes to run your household. You know, uh, So if we can make it a little more predictable that every month, that when you take that money out, the next month you're still gonna be able to rely on that next month's income, this thing I was making a little, you know, just a little gesture of the Jags, this is called sequence risk, okay? That, that the sequence in which the money you're taking out of that nice 401k or IRA, right? If it's main, main, mainly in market securities that do Jag, you could be stuck taking out the same amount of money as you did last month, but it's costing you way more money because it's in investments that have gone down that, that week, okay? Right. The groceries you need still cost the same amount of money. They might actually be getting slightly more expensive, by the way. They don't, it never gets cheaper somehow. Yes, because of inflation too, but that's- The only things that are getting cheaper are things like 50 inch televisions, which you only need really one of. Mine is much smaller, by the way, and it's ancient, <laughs> um, but I'm frugal, right? But, uh, but even so, you know, internet is not getting cheaper. You know, even groceries are not getting cheaper. Actually the cost of meat has gone up significantly in COVID. Um, not that I buy that much of that either, but I, I see the prices and I see fewer sales. And that's, this is called compression, right? So sequence risk is the risk of what day you have to take out your money. The truth is that, you know, my rent is due, my maintenance is due every month on the first of the day, the first of the month. So if I'm relying on those market securities, right? And I'm taking it out on the wrong month, I will not have 30 years to get back to where I was. Okay, because I'm 54 and we can have we've actually had kind of a jaggy year and they say it's going to be jaggy next year, this year and next year and probably for a long, long time. So that's this is why for people of not super duper means no, look, if you're independently wealthy, you're probably not going to be on the phone because you probably have figured it out already. You have an advisor and they give you an allowance and they they do all the stuff we're talking about for you. And they'll probably say, let's not do an annuity because you can be your own annuity you know, arranger and take some risks and they have enough of your resources that they can pretty much spread things around to, to duplicate what Veronique can help you with with New York Life. So when you join that pool, you're investing your money with a whole bunch of other people. And it's really, in the end, it's the reputation and the capacity of that company to smooth out the jacks. Now, when you do that, you also don't, you're, you're, you're sacrificing some of the, the highs that you see right? But you are going to have something that's more like this climbing up a little bit. That number one, keeping up with inflation is so important, right? Uh, because if, if inflation eroding our, our income is a huge problem. You're, we already know this if you talk to people on Social Security, right? They finally got a cost of living increase, but it's this teeny tiny amount, right? But meanwhile, the things that you've got to pay for have still gone up and it doesn't match up. So that's compression where your, your income is staying like this, but your costs are going like this, right? So your quality of life is getting more, you know, it's getting more difficult to enjoy all the things uh, that you can. But Veronique, definitely with annuity, uh, variable or fixed, depends on what, you, what, your, what kind of risk you want to take on, right? That's a very personal thing. And, uh, you know, taking more risk also, you know, also offers some reward. You know, and it depends on, it's very personal to your situation, including like those other things. Like if Abby, Abby Miller has a fixed, uh, like the federal government is going to keep on paying that federal pension. It's not going to go out of business. They're not going to change the rules on her. 
Uh, however, uh, you know, if you work for a different kind of firm, they may have a match now and they may take- you're an independent contractor. If you're an independent contractor, then, then you're, so Abby Kaufman, my biggest concern for her is that she needs, she's in a phase where she's still accumulating, right? And, but she has to spend to, to maintain her home, but also grow her business, right? And this is a time where she's got a, several different things she's working on at the same time. But, but Abby, you, you, it, when you get to the point of figuring out what you can afford, you could buy a little predictability by considering an annuity. It's definitely, I think it's perfect for a situation like yours, because if you can afford it, it's just that it's also a matter of funding it. And once you lock it away, you cannot, once you commit to this, you really, it would be costly to get out of. No, you can get it up. I mean, it's 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 a purchase. Done. It's done. It's done. You know, so it's not but like we don't go too fast to them. We we, we take time and explain. Takes and time. Stuff. But the point is that so that's so that's something like it has a lot of promise. It's great for if you have a stable situation where you know you can you know fund it, and and then but you can also on the other end you can decide when you need to take it out. So what's interesting is in retirement it's a whole different phase in life than we're, you know, spending and not earning as much. But I think Abby Miller's pattern is really interesting because we can also, if you're employed, right, you can also do something more hybrid. Like what Abby's doing is she's working part-time. She has, she's tapping into benefits, which are powerful, but also funding other stuff on the side. Now that's quite magical when you, you know, look at how that can work. And if you can pursue that, that's great for, for some people. And in fact, I have clients who've actually pursued positions to get the benefits right where the but salary was not necessarily the super duper attraction so if you are, you are over 50 you have a catch-up so that's right, right. Cool. i'm way over 50 <laughs> <laughs> so today today's everybody my, sounds like no 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 10 years old <laughs> no i just today's actually my 58th birthday so that's i think what? next year Next year, I can actually start taking out whatever, but I'm not, obviously. Right, but you don't need um, to. My question is actually, I don't know, I feel like I'm hogging up the time, but no. with this annuity idea, do you fund it every month or you just do one felt swoop and say, okay, I'm going to put, you know, $200,000 in and then this is going to cover me for X, you know, whatever. How does that work? You, you can do a lump sum and then if you want, you can add every month or you can just do a lump sum. Say it again. I'm sorry, because somebody I'm texted. Oh no, I'm saying you can do it as a lump sum, and then let's say you want 200 a month, so you can continue to do 200 a month, or you can just do a lump sum. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And what? And the negative that Tom said is that uh, potentially you're missing out on greater um, uh, growth of money in more riskier things or in other types of uh, financial instruments. Is that the idea? Well, not missing out. I don't think. I think that you know, there's uh, the risk here. You want the to be invested, say, for example, in the stock market. For example, where you have somebody who's you know your investment advisor, and you you choose whether you want a, a low risk, medium risk, high risk, whatever, and you do some stuff with the stock market. This would be something working with Veronique, where you have guarantee as mm -hmm. and Veronique was saying, you have a guaranteed amount. It's just that you're not gonna have these highs and lows right. of the stock market. So, you know, it's 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 about kind of creating that very diverse portfolio for yourself that, that really is going to reflect your needs or your projected needs for your future. Uh -huh. Interesting. It's a diversification. Um, was, you're not gonna put all your money in the annuity. Like you're not no. gonna put all your money in the bank. It's, no. We have to see and, and diversify your portfolio. So if one place you're more risky and maybe you lose money, the other place at least is stable, right. and you know you can get money and, and buy your groceries like Sean Tom mentioned earlier. Yeah. yeah. I, have, I, ha I mean, I can share my own position. I have, I have a 401k and I have it in a target date approach. Yep, yep, me too. You yeah. know, and I actually chose a much later target date than 65. Yeah. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't, I think I'll be working until, quite frankly, I'm planning on working until I'm, my, my husband then closes his shop until he's 81. Uh, and as a lawyer, I think I can, I can easily be just a sage, you know, attorney and just uh, be more selective with my clients and that that might even happen sooner. But I think the risk for all of us in our 50s 
is that we don't we have to have some part of our investments you know riding the market because the the risk of putting it all in three percent is that three percent can be eroded quickly because if we are in a season of high inflation which can happen then your three percent guaranteed will actually kind of not you know we won't be able to compensate for that that's why Veronique saying that having a diverse portfolio is really important. So this is a, a piece, very important piece of a larger, but I think when, I think some people think, you know, they, they need to lock it in all in at the same time or at a certain age, which may be too soon for them given how long they, they might be living. So that, but uh, no, I think, I personally think annuities can be very, very helpful to bring some predictability. It's, you know, it's, it's a, you, 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 there is a, a trade-off. It's always, there's always some kind of trade-off. So it's, you're not gonna be able to say you will get the same returns as if you, you know, I mean, there are people, if they, you know, if they're more, less risk averse, but also, you know, if they have more, they have more resources where they can, you know, play a little bit more. But the thing is that I think everybody who has enough should probably, you know, based on Veronique's suggestion, probably have a little mix of things, right? So, so for, for example, I have a client last year that uh, he, he had something in, in, in a variable annuity and he wanted to do this, um, this annuity, the, the fixed annuity. Um, and uh, he was waiting to earn a little bit more. And he said, you know what, let's wait a little bit more. If I make a little bit more money, I'll take the, the profit and I'll put it in there. So we did it in three days. He earned more money. We were like, quickly, take the money, put it in another place and lock it. So he has both now. It's still going up and he has some money locked. So, you know. It makes a match. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I was wondering, because Bernie, you're talking a little bit about like, um, like if you're unemployed right now, or if you maybe change jobs, or you've had to pivot your jobs um, with COVID, you were talking about um, like the four old 401ks and what you can do with that. So I think maybe that would be helpful, something to talk about. Sure, sure. So now because because of the situation with COVID, I mean, there's a lot of downsizing and, and there's a lot of people that, uh, uh, lose their job. So um, um, what happened is, even if they don't lose the job, even before that, when people left the job, they, they, they left the job, they took everything, but the money that they made still in, the, in, in their old job. And, and they can leave it there, but nobody is watching their account. So it's passive. Like, like if you are not working anymore in, in that place, why do you want your money to be there, right? So the option is either you leave it there, you cash it out, which a lot of people don't want to do because you have to pay penalty and, and, and taxes and all this, or you can roll it over to another place, which it doesn't cost you anything. And that's what I do a lot right now in the time of COVID. So there's a lot of people that um, roll over uh, their old 401k to an IRA. Uh, we do a lot of Roth right now uh, because the interest rate is very low. So, um, so that's what that's that's how I can help with the old four hundred one ks for three B, all of these things. Um, and then, um, yeah. Um, so why Roth now? What did you say about interest rate? Oh, because the interest interest rate are, are low. If you, I don't know what what you have already. If you have already a Roth or you have a traditional IRA, if you have a traditional, then then just leave it the way it is. But but now you know more people doing the Roth uh, because because the interest rate is is low. So the interest rate. You mean the tax? You mean the tax rate or the interest? Yeah, so what, what's going to happen in the future, probably, yeah, taxes are going to go up probably in the future. It depends what, what, what you think. So, for, so if, you, if you do a Roth, um, it's deferred. So no, you, you pay the Roth, pay Roth the you pay Roth taxes tax now. Rate. Yes, Roth, you pay taxes now. So that, that which, you, uh, can you do both? Like a little bit of yes. Roth and traditional? Sure you can. Sure yes, that. I do both. Uh, I do myself both because I'm like, I don't know what I should have done that. Better. Yeah. Sometimes this is better, you know, so I'm like, okay, this is going to equal, hopefully. Yeah, I kind of screwed up because I think this year probably was the last year that it'd be really worthwhile. Taxes are probably definitely going to go up. They should, I mean. 
we can yeah, we can pretty much rely on that. Well, there is also conversion, but I don't know if it's worth it. You can convert your traditional to to a Roth, mm -hmm. but it has yeah. To be, yeah it, Very contextual you, though. You need to see if it's worth it. What happened yeah, is you have to really run the pay the taxes now, and we're right. going to continue tax different. It really depends on. It. I mean, the idea in general is that most people are going to have lower income in retirement because they're not working. Even if they're working, they're not working as many hours or days or have a higher as the highest salary. Yeah. I think most most IRA you know individual retirement account holders, when they're drawing down, let's say in their seventies and eighties, they're going to be in a lower marginal tax. They're in a lower they're in a lower bracket. So putting it off till later, you know, the question is if people are in a higher earning phase now in their fifties, they're probably going to be in the highest rate they're going to be, you know, and it's probably going to go up. So this is the question is, is, you know, if, if we're predicting that tax rates will go up, marginal tax rate will go up, you pay now and then it, and then it's going to go down. The difference is that it can, it can also compound without future taxation. So you know, it's, it's a, I think it's, it's very contextual. Each case is different, but you talk to a, your advisor with your goals. This is why Veronique can, you know, help you think through the, the what ifs. Um, and so, yes, I think there's some opportunity that could have been come and gone for certain people, but it's also marginal. I think the more important thing is socking them away the money. If you can get a match, take the match, um, max out if you can. I mean, these are just like little kind of maxims, right? If you can do anything to save money, just sock, even if you don't get a match, just max out. If you max out every year that you can, you will benefit immensely when you look at the numbers of how your account is going to go up. Even if it's in not, you know, as long as it's not in a super duper safe, if it's in 2% and 3% investments, it's not going to be as interesting. Uh, so this is where, and I just think in general, like if you can take some risk with some of the, your investments, you should, because you need to ride. If you look back, even back to the Great Depression, if you just kept on saving money and just putting it in and not taking it out too soon, no matter which period you look at, you probably would have done fine. Just don't get too scared to take it out. Now, I think my female clients are more like me. I'm like more like them, I should say, because actually men in general are the, the playing around too much with their investments. I call it set it and forget it. You remember this? There was a commercial for some up TV, some desktop, tabletop appliance of some, I don't know, some rotisserie chicken. I thought it was a hairspray. What was it? <laughs> a hairspray? They call it set it and forget it. I was going to say, like, I would do that for the instant pot. That, that's like set it right. and forget it. No, but it. if you trust the recipe, don't take the lid off. Don't change. If you think it's a, if you get, if it gets a, 800 i love it five star you know results don't change it once you decide find out later that the chili is perfect but if you play around with it and take that lid off or do that little release it i guarantee you you won't get the result for certain you won't get the result the thing is that you may not be able to save it later and that's honestly you know getting great advice and being deliberate can really serve you well in the long run. So I see people all the time, they look at the paper too much or they, whatever it is, CNBC or CNN, and they say, uh oh, and they, what they're doing is they're selling low on the day they, by the time they hear it, the market's been hours been selling, 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 right? So the thing is that if you're, as, you know, being emotional about money and the way that kind of, you know, knowing the way that we respond to that kind of stuff, has a huge effect on the way that we invest, the way we behave with money. There's a whole thing around behavioral finance. You can just Google it. Um, it's a really interesting field. But you know, why I'm here on this call is to assure you, everybody on the call, is that they're great professionals who care about their clients. They have the knowledge. I totally trust Veronique to take care of you know any number of clients that come my way. Uh, and the thing is that we need people. If we're and frankly, even people in the business use financial advisors. Oh, yeah. They do not manage, they don't necessarily manage your own money the way they, they manage, you know, their own paying clients. Because we all, we all have our own hangups, number one. And we all need someone who's our kind of little bird, for me, I call a little bird, you know, to say, oh, well, you know, did you max out? 
because you're you're running out of time now. Your little IRA deadline is coming up you know, December 15th. Don't wait till December 14th because it can get messed up. I hate it when people run too close because they can really lose the benefit, you know, of of, of what's coming to them because they they take a little too, you know, run it too close and then they miss a deadline. Somebody else messes up and it doesn't go in on the right date. But uh, but there were other people on the call. I wonder if there were other questions that we might be addressing. I think Abby Collins put something in the chat. Yeah, she, we, we were speaking a lot about the annuities because Abby put that in the chat. Um, I think she has some more specific questions, but I hope she will reach out. Direct. Yeah, she's Is certainly Abby? welcome to reach out. If she wants to, you know, put the message in chat or unmute herself, yes. it's welcome. Yes. We still have some minutes left. Uh, Abby C, Abby Collins, we can definitely help. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. I think it's great that we have the number we have, by the way. I think it's it's very intimate and and it's it's a space that I love the way that Abby Kaufman kind of holds this space for us, right? It's just uh, it's very special. Oh, but, uh, but yeah, because she's just, she's just trying to I'll ask you to unmute. See if you can. She's, okay. Whoever's the hostess. Yeah. Yep, it's it's coming. So yeah, Abby Abby calls. Abby, can be here. We, we're ready for you. Oh, there you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ab. Uh oh. Maybe that maybe our mic isn't working. Do we need to do anything? We can't. No, I mean, we've already. No, it may, it may, be, it may be Abby's. Um, Wi-Fi. I wish, I'd love to hear her questions. There's also, a, uh, there's also a call in number, but you know, if she called even Abby Kaufman, uh, who could just hold the phone up to the mic, her mic, <laughs> that might, that might be like a very kind of. Um, I think um, she was asking for a little more detail about the annuities. I see but, it. Okay. I see I, her. Oh, good. Yeah, I oh, thought I the question. Asking okay. the difference between fixed and variable annuities. Okay. Yeah, so yes, definitely I can explain the fixed and the variable. So fixed annuity, it's probably, let's say, um, um, the annuity has a fixed rate. So it can be, let's say, 2%, 3%. It depends on, on what it is right now. I think it's probably 225 if I'm um, correct. And the variable, annu variable annuity, the rate changes based on the market. So it depends what kind of funds you have in the market. And based on that, it, it changes. It can go up, it can, it can go down. It's not fixed. That's the difference between the two. So the rate that you lock in when you create the fixed account is what you get? Yes. So it's like fix is more like a CD. Probably you know what's a CD, right? Uh, so let's say if if if, if um, you put you, you lock your money for three percent or two percent, you know it's two percent. You lock it for let's say at least three years, up to nine years. Um, you know it depends how many years you want to lock it. And then the variable is also you lock it, but you can change the funds in the variable. So what we do in variables, there is an automatic. Um, let's say for example you have different fund and if some of the fund goes up and the other ones goes down based on your risk tolerance we can adjust it back to 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 your profile so abby's also asking how much do you have to invest in an annuity uh well to start it you can put uh, about 1200 and 100 dollar a month And you can put more, you can put the lump sum if you want. And that's for variable or for both? For, I have to check the, the fix, but yes, I can get back to you with that. Is there a time when having fixed would be preferable over variable or vice versa? It, it depends. It depends um, how long you have to retirement. And if you have enough time and you're risky, you know, you, you, you can probably stay in the market and do something risky. You don't have to do 90% risk, 10% safe. You can be, do 60, 40 or 70, 30. And then with the time you get closer to retirement, you change the percentage. 
if you want something that you want, let's say some people have money and they say, I want to put money for three years. And after three years, I'll decide what I want to do. Right now, I want to put food for three years in, in this percent. So well, that's what people do. So in other words, you can kind of set your own time frame. Yes. How long you want to be working with these annuities. Yeah. Yes, at least three right. years. That answered Abby's question, her next question. Oh. How long do you have to continue these payments? If you well, you don't have to continue these payments if you don't want to. It's an option. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a pretty good plan. <laughs> Definitely something to look into in terms yeah, of yeah. It depends. Um, there is different kind of there is flex. There is different kind of um, annuities, but yes, that's the main thing. Um, you you can you can do up to six seven thousand depends on your age if you're over 50 annually yes so it's in addition to your sep or your um 401k no okay so it's it's this, it's it's ruled by the same uh limits yes so you for for the for taxes and all this, you, you probably have to ask your, your accountant because it, it's, um, there is a certain amount that you can put. The IRS doesn't want you to enjoy your money too much, you know? <laughs> so, wow. so, but there are other vehicles you can put money. It's not only there, you know? There's other ways you can put money. There is, um, again, it, it, it depends on, on other variable. There is um, uh, places that um, you, you, some people put money in the life insurance because um, it's, it's after tax money. So you don't pay taxes on it when you pull the money out. So there's different ways that you can put different places money. Again, it depends, you know, on other variables, on your health, on your age. So, um, did you want to talk at all a little bit more about that, Veronique, about different life insurance options that can be, maybe just give us like a little... Yeah, I can give you a little uh, synopsis about life insurance, just so you know, in, in general, because... Um, I have a lot of people that actually are calling me now because they're kind of concerned about their families with COVID and all of that. And, and, and um, the, the company also is trying to help and they reduce some of the amount of the insurance just to have something. And people do something for even for a couple of years just to know that something is safe. So um, just, just in general, there, 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 there is different types of life insurance, but I'll just touch on the temporary and permanent. So temporary is, 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 is a temporary, is its term. It's like 10 years, five years, 20 years. Permanent is for all your life. And the permanent, it's like um, you own um, an asset. So if you understand about uh, maybe, if I explain what is renting a home versus owning a home, the renting, you just pay the money every month, but there's nothing back. It's an expense. The, the, the buying, the purchasing a home, yes, at first you put money in, you pay the mortgage, it's more expensive, but at the end you have an asset. You didn't just spend the money out. It comes back to you. So, you know, so some people use the term, of course, you know, if you have kids and all this mortgage, uh, if something happens, then, then it's covering it. Older people use it for final expenses. They wanna make sure that there is money there to be buried. They don't wanna ask their family to bury them. Uh, I think that, that the government gives $255 to people that de die. I don't know what we can do with that, but anyway, so. <laughs> I don't even bother to- You buy a bottle of champagne and say- Yeah, but it's a lot of work to get that money back. <laughs> Um, well, that's what people do, yes. So uh, I think, you know, people had to sort of jump off. So and it's just about- It's about time anyway. And I think that, you know, we really got a great overview of several different options that not only are applicable during this time of crisis, but also 
you know, even under relatively normal circumstances and clearly excellent resources, you know, Veronique, uh, what I'll do of course is send along your contact information to everyone who was on the call tonight. And, um, you know, everyone knows how to get in touch with Tom, so. <laughs> Yes, and just to mention, I, I just want to mention that I don't charge for, for conversation and, and all that because sometimes people think, you know, it's costing me to talk to her and all this, so I don't charge. So, you know, just feel free to reach out and I'm always happy to be here. Well, Veronique is a huge... A Thank you. Resource. I think I'm the only one left. It's really quickly. So, Veronique, um, yes. two questions. One is, uh, do you work for yourself or you work for a life insurance company? I'm sorry, I didn't hear in the very beginning. Oh, okay, so so uh, basically I, I am in financial services um, about 10 years. The bank company I work with is New York Life, but I have access to 200 different uh, life insurance companies. I also do the, um, disability insurance. I do long-term care, health and, and dental and stuff like that. And oh, wow. yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, I'm obviously, obviously she does my policy. So, so <laughs> obviously. Yeah, yeah. It's not that I go I, I, I do what fits the client. So if somebody fits with New York Life, I'll take them to New York Life. But if it doesn't fit, then we'll have to ship them with somebody else. Yeah, no. I really appreciate this. It was very helpful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, no. I actually, Abby, I didn't realize until a few years ago, I just got very lucky with the federal government because like they have these group policies that, you know, they don't check you like for long-term care, you know, or whatever. Like I got a cheap, like a quarter of the price I could get as a private person, you know, being my age and whatever. But um, the other thing is, is that for a lot of these life insurance things, if if your my term is going to end soon because my kid is eighteen, I will never be able to get insurance because I have too many medical problems now. Then I had nothing, you know. Uh, so if you have a lot of medical issues, maybe maybe we can see um, if we can get you a guarantee issue. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, but um, yeah, I think Abby helpful. Veronique would definitely be able to be a great resource for yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not okay, all. Thanks. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there now um, for people with yes situations. I mean, we can talk okay. definitely. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Thank you so much. I'm gonna. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your all time. Right. Thanks for making time for us. Sure. Take care. Wonderful. Bye. Stay well.